Sumerian, Phoenician, Carthaginian, Hebrew, Babylonian, Egyptian, and Celtic Druidism religions, human and child sacrifice, and the Dark Trinity. Sumerian religion circa 4000 BCE. The Sumerians, one of the earliest known civilizations, worshipped a pantheon of gods that personified elements of nature and society. Among their many gods, Anu Sky God, Enlil God of the Wind, and Inanna Goddess of Love and War stood prominent. Sumerian religious practices included the offering of servants and attendants for deceased royalty, especially during royal burials, implying a form of ritual death for accompanying the elite into the afterlife. Egyptian religion circa 3100 BCE. The Egyptians, whose religion is centered on gods such as Isis, Osiris, and Set, largely emphasized the journey to the afterlife and the preservation of the body through mummification. Isis and Osiris represent life, death, and resurrection, while Set embodies chaos. Certain rituals, such as the offering of enemies or prisoners, involved human sacrifice, particularly during times of military conquest or major crises to appease the gods. Babylonian religion circa 1894 BCE. Babylonians, inheriting much from Sumerian traditions, worshipped gods such as Marduk, Ishtar a later version of Inanna, and Enlil. Evidence points to human and child sacrifice being practiced during times, such as war or famine to win favor with the gods. Marduk, as the chief deity, was honored with large-scale rituals, and some ancient texts suggest the offering of human lives. Phoenician religion circa 1500 BCE. The Phoenicians, known for their seafaring trade, practiced a religion centered on El, the supreme god, and Bol, a god of fertility, storms, and war. Astarte, a form of Ishtar, or Inanna, was another key deity representing fertility and sexuality. Human and child sacrifice was deeply embedded in Phoenician religious practice. The most infamous practice was the offering of infants and children, especially to Bol and El, typically in times of great distress or to secure blessings for the community. Archaeological evidence from sites like Carthage, a Phoenician colony, was urns containing the remains of infants sacrificed to these deities. Hebrew religion circa 1200 BCE. The Hebrews assimilated aspects of Canaanite religion at their early history, particularly when they settled in the land of Canaan. The Canaanite practice of child sacrifice to gods, like Baal and Moloch influenced some early Hebrew practices. The Bible and archaeological evidence indicate that some Hebrews engaged in child sacrifice during times of crisis or in attempts to assimilate into Canaanite culture. The ritual of child sacrifice, particularly to Moloch, a deity sometimes linked with Baal, involved burning children alive. These sacrifices were believed to bring divine favor during times of war or famine. Carthaginian religion, circa 800 BCE. A Phoenician colony, Carthage inherited many of the religious practices of its Phoenician forebears. Child sacrifice was a well-documented and systematic part of Carthaginian religion. The Tophet, an open-air sacrificial site, has revealed thousands of urns containing the remains of sacrificed children. Bolhaman, a form of Bol, was the primary deity associated with these sacrifices, and Astarte played a secondary role in fertility rituals. These offerings were often made during times of crisis or to secure agricultural fertility. Celtic Druidism circa 300 BCE The Celtic Druids worshipped a pantheon of nature gods and spirits. While Druids are best known for their connection to nature and spiritual rites, there is also evidence of human and child sacrifice within their religious practice. According to Roman sources, Druids conducted large-scale human sacrifices, particularly during times of war. The method often involved burning or stabbing the victims to appease gods associated with war and nature. The wicker man, a large effigy in which victims were burnt alive, 
is one of the most infamous examples of sacrificial practices in Druidism. Key deities and the Dark Trinity. L. Supreme God in Canaanite and Phoenician religions, often associated with creation and the cosmos. Bol, a storm and fertility god, central to Phoenician and Canaanite religions. Bol is frequently associated with human and child sacrifices, often in exchange for blessings of fertility or victory in battle. The Egyptian god Set is synonymous with Bol, Astarte, also known as Ishtar. Astarte was the goddess of fertility, war, and sexuality. In Phoenician and Canaanite cultures, she played a role in rituals that included human sacrifice, often to secure agricultural or reproductive fertility. The Egyptian goddess Isis Sirius is synonymous with Astarte. Isis, Osiris, and Set, Egyptian deities associated with life, death, resurrection, and chaos, respectively. Egyptian religion, unlike Phoenician and Canaanite practices, did not emphasize human sacrifice as a central ritual, but occasional offerings may have been made during crisis periods. Lucifer. In later theological developments, Lucifer associated with Satan became connected with this pantheon as a figure of ultimate evil in the context of Christianity. In some occult traditions, Bol, Astarte, and Lucifer are part of a dark trinity symbolizing chaos, destruction, and rebellion against divine order. Assimilation of Canaanite practices by the Hebrews. The early Hebrews, during their settlement in Canaan, were influenced by the religious practices of their neighbors, particularly the Canaanites and Phoenicians. This assimilation included the adoption of child sacrifice, a practice deeply embedded in the worship of Baal and Moloch. Archaeological evidence and biblical texts indicate that some Hebrews engaged in these rituals, despite later religious reforms and laws forbidding them. The Valley of Hinnom later referred to as Gehenna, is particularly infamous for child sacrifices to Moloch, where children were burned as offerings to secure blessings or divine favor. Freemasonry. Freemasonry is an oath-bound fee-based secretive anti-atheist religious fraternal organization that claims to trace its origins to the late medieval stonemason guilds. Some Freemasons claim a historical connection to the Knights Templar, suggesting that the ideals of the Templars influence the development of Freemasonry. Knights Templar, or Order of the Knights of the Temple of Solomon, was founded around 1119 during the Crusades. Freemasonry is the largest worldwide secret society spread by the advance of the British Empire. It is the oldest fraternity in the world and among the oldest continued organizations in history. Freemasonry is identical with the ancient mystery schools. It is a secret society within a secret society. The outer aspect is the public, visible organization with its rituals, symbols, and teachings, which are accessible to all members. The inner aspect is a more esoteric, reserved for those who have demonstrated a deeper commitment to the principles and ideals of Freemasonry. Masonic temples or lodges are often modeled on Solomon's Temple, a structure described in the Hebrew Bible as a place of worship built by the Hebrew, Israelite, Jew King Solomon in Jerusalem. The Oriental chair in Masonic temples refers to a special seat often designated for the worshipful master. This chair symbolizes the authority of the master over the lodge and reflects the hierarchical structure within Freemasonry. The master of the lodge is the presiding officer responsible for overseeing meetings, conducting rituals, and ensuring the lodge's moral and ethical standards are upheld. This role reflects the leadership qualities of King Solomon who is often seen as a wise and just ruler in Masonic tradition. Historically, King Solomon is noted in the Bible for his construction of high places for various deities, including Bol and Ashtoreth. Solomon married several foreign women, including the daughter of Pharaoh of Egypt and other women from Moab, Ammon, and Sidon. These marriages brought foreign religious practices into Israel. 1 Kings 11 to 4 to 8 states, For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, 
and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom the abomination of the Ammonites. Solomon built high places for Bol in the valley of Hinnom. 1 Kings 11-4-8 describes how Solomon turned away from Yahweh, and as previously mentioned, child sacrifice, particularly in the context of Canaanite religions, was a ritual practice aimed at appeasing deities like Bol and Astarte. The practice involved a sacrifice of children, often by fire, as an offering for fertility, prosperity, or divine favor. By establishing high places for these deities, Solomon effectively legitimized these foreign religious practices. This suggests an acceptance and endorsement of the rituals associated with them, including child sacrifice. Solomon's actions reflect a broader trend of syncretism, where the worship of Yahweh was blended with Canaanite religious practices. Solomon's actions set a precedent that led to greater syncretism between the worship of Yahweh and the Canaanite deities, contributing to the spiritual decline of Israel and leading to future kings continuing in these practices. To Kings 23-10 this passage references child sacrifice in the context of the high places and their defilement by later kings, indicating that such practices may have persisted from Solomon's reign onward. The absence of explicit biblical condemnation of Solomon for child sacrifice indicates that he participated in or sanctioned these practices without facing immediate repercussions, reflecting a moral decline in the Israelite kingdom during his reign. Bolan Baphomet some interpretations view Baphomet as a representation of ancient pagan practices, which could include the worship of Baal. In some Christian traditions, especially during the Middle Ages and later, various pagan deities, including Baal, were demonized. Baphomet emerged as an archetype of this demonization, being linked to perceived devil worship. As Christianity spread, many pagan deities, including Baal, were demonized and reinterpreted as embodiments of evil. This was part of a broader trend of erasing or vilifying indigenous religions and their practices. During the demonization of pagan practices, Baphomet became a representation of these heretical beliefs, drawing on earlier associations with the Knights Templar. The transformation of Baphomet into a symbol of pagan worship echoed the historical demonization of Baal, Baal and Beelzebub, the name Beelzebub is associated with the Canaanite god Baal. The name Beelzebub is derived from the Hebrew Baal-Zebub, which can be translated as Lord of the Flies or Lord of the Exalted Dwelling. Baal refers to the Phoenician, Canaanite fertility gods, representing a significant aspect of ancient Near Eastern worship, focused on agriculture and fertility. The term Zebub is often interpreted as meaning fly in Hebrew although some interpretations relate it to exalted dwelling or heavenly dwelling. The combination suggests a figure associated with both physical and spiritual realms. Beelzebub is often regarded as a major demon or even a title for Satan within Christian demonology. The worship of Paul involved rituals that included child sacrifice. This historical context positions Beelzebub as a continuation of the worship of pagan deities. Beelzebub, as the lord of the flies or prince of demons, is closely linked to the worship of Baal, representing the persistence of ancient pagan practices in the context of biblical narratives, the devil. Names for the devil are numerous, besides Lucifer, he may be referred to as the prince of darkness, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles, Baphomet, lord of the flies, the antichrist, father of lies, Moloch or simply Satan. Conclusion. Human and child sacrifice was a significant aspect of several ancient religions, particularly among the Sumerians, Egyptians, Phoenicians, Carthaginians, Canaanites, Hebrews, and Celtic Druids. Deities like Baal, El, and Astarte were central to these rituals, often associated with fertility, war, and divine favor. The influence of Canaanite religions on early Hebrew worship demonstrates a period of assimilation where child sacrifice played a role. 
The dark trinity of Bol, Astarte, and Lucifer symbolizes the destructive and chaotic aspects of these ancient religions, reflecting the profound power of ritual sacrifice in ancient societies.